Hi! For this video we're going to look at this function and use level curves to understand what's going on with the graph of this function. So the first thing you want to think about, even if it doesn't specifically ask you to do that, is to think about the domain of the function. Uh, so the domain of this function is going to be all of our two except any values that would make the denominator zero. And so the only values that would make x squared plus y squared equal to zero would be just the origin. So we would be x, y is equal to the origin. So we want to exclude that from the domain. So the domain would be the set of all x, y in R2 such that x, y is not equal to the origin. And there are different ways you could write that that would be okay, but the key thing is that you understand that the domain is everything in the xy plane except 0, 0. Okay, so then um, when I do level curves, I'm going to choose some constant values, and I'm going to think about the xy that would be in the domain that would give me that constant output value. So we want to think about the different possible output values for this function. Uh, generally, I just kind of start by thinking about positive, negative, and zero to start with, and then maybe um, refine that and think about some more values. So uh, if you think about this function, we can get negative output values when I put in, uh, if the numerator is negative, then I'll have a negative output value for this function. So I just chose an easy output value for the function here, c equals negative one. Uh, we'll also be able to think about c equals zero, and c equals 1. All right, so I'm just going to think about those three to start with, and then I might choose some other constant output values for the function. All right, so if I put in negative 1 for the output of the function, uh, then I have this equation, and so then I want to think a little bit about what that means and think about what the graph of that looks like. So I would probably multiply both sides by x squared plus y squared. So I'd get negative x squared minus y squared equals x. And then maybe recognize that that is a circle, just not centered at the origin. If I add the x squared and y squared terms to both sides, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put them on the left side here. But if I add the x squared and y squared terms to both sides, I'll have x squared plus x, I'm going to leave a little space there, plus y squared equals zero. So I skipped a little step of algebra there, adding x squared and y squared to both sides, and then sort of um, turning that around. So I have all the variables on one side. Uh, the reason I left a little space there is because, uh, hopefully you remember when we did some things with spheres about completing the square. Uh, so this is an equation of a circle, but I need to complete the square in order to put it in standard form and think about um, what x's and y's, what the graph of that would look like. So I'm going to take half of this coefficient of the x term, so half of 1 is 1 half, and then I'm going to square that, and so I'll get 1 fourth, and I'm going to add 1 fourth to both sides of that equation, and then that allows me to factor the x terms into x plus 1 half, the quantity squared, plus y squared equals one-fourth, and that is a circle with the center at negative one-half comma zero, and the radius is one-half. Okay, and then when I do these others, I'll get some other variations of that. Um, I'm going to go over here and do c equals one next. I'll do that in a different color here. c equals one. So I'll have one equals x over x squared plus y squared, and we get kind of a similar deal here. If I multiply both sides of that by x squared plus y squared, I get uh, x squared plus y squared equals x, and then I'm going to subtract the x term from both sides and leave a little space, and I will take half of that negative one coefficient. I'll get negative one half and square it, so I'll add one fourth to both sides, and then that gives me uh, something I can factor for the x's, so I end up with x minus one-half, the quantity squared, plus y squared equals one-fourth. And so that, again, is a circle. That one has a center at one-half comma zero, and a radius of one-half. Okay, and then for the c equals zero, I get something a little bit different here. Um, if I have zero, equals this fraction, that's only going to be equal to zero if the numerator equals zero. So for this one, I don't really have a circle, I just have x equals zero. All right, I'm going to go ahead and graph 
uh, those three level curves on one coordinate system and then talk a little bit about what that tells us about the graph of the function. Uh, one thing that I do want to pay attention to though, remember our domain uh, was all of R2 except the origin. So I want to make sure when I draw these that I exclude the origin uh, from any of these curves. You might notice that actually all three of these pass through the origin. So when I draw these level curves, I'm going to set up a coordinate system here just in the xy plane. Remember that uh, level curves would just be part of the domain of the function, so those would just be in the xy plane. And I'm going to go ahead and scale. And I'm going to go ahead and scale off here uh, by one half and one. So one, negative one, and one and negative one. So uh, because I have these circles of radius one half, I went ahead and uh, scaled it at one, but I've got these little tick marks at one half. All right, so I'm gonna do these in color that kind of matches what I did here with the uh, equations. So for the first one, when the output of the function is negative one, I've got a circle whose center is at negative one half zero, and then the radius of that circle is one half. So I'm gonna have a circle here and I really should exclude the origin so that circle should not include the origin I put an open circle there at the origin to indicate that the origin was not included um, and then x equals 0 that's the y-axis but it's not all of the y-axis so I want to exclude the origin remember so all of the y-axis except the origin and then the other one I did when c is equal to 1 I have a circle with center at one half zero and radius one half. And again, that circle would pass through the origin, except that I want to exclude the origin. All right, so there are three level curves. Uh, I can maybe think about what's gonna happen if I have other level curves. I should also label these. This one is when C equals one. This one is in C equals zero. And this one is when C equals negative one. All right, so and when we think about what that tells us about the graph of the surface, uh, we would know that these constant outputs would correspond to z coordinates on the graph of the function. So the c equals one, that is the highest value I plugged in here. So that would be telling us that the function is gonna be higher on the z direction of the graph. Uh, when we're at this point, when we have points that are in the first and fourth quadrant here for the x and y uh, plane. So higher in the z direction. And then the points that are actually in the xy plane on the 3D graph would be when the c is equal to zero. So the surface will be passing through the xy plane on the y-axis. And then what I would expect to see is that we are below the xy plane. This c equals negative one would correspond to a z value of negative one. That we're gonna be below the xy plane. Uh, so lower z values when we are left of the y-axis in the 3D graph. Okay, I have gone ahead and plugged in our original function to Calcplot 3D. And here's that graph. It looks a little bit crazy. Uh, so we've got these, if I rotate this around a little bit, you can see I've got these kind of this part going way up, and this part going way down, and it's kind of just looking a little bit strange there. Uh, I'm also gonna go ahead and do the level curves here. So I just am gonna use the default settings on the level curves here. So it's gonna give me level curves from z equals negative one to z equals positive one with an increment of 0 0.2. So I'll get 11 different level curves when I did it. I only did three level curves. And then remember, if you click on the graph, the level curves, you'll be able to see a graph of the three-dimensional surface with those level curves labeled, and also the graph of the level curves over uh, to the left there. All right, so this is kind of an interesting surface here. You notice all these level curves really correspond to these circles. I did the, um, two of the circles, one when c equals negative one, one when c equals one, and then I've got the level curve that's right on the y-axis there. Um, but this is kind of a, an interesting and strange graph. This is not the graph of a surface I would expect you to be able to draw by hand, 
maybe be able to use the level curves to identify the graph of a surface. There's some matching problems in your homework where you're given the graph of level curves and the graph of a surface and supposed to match those. So those would be the kinds of things I would expect you to do with a function like this. Okay, try some of those homework problems and then we'll look at some things with graphs in higher dimensions.